being um, Voxley. And these both have been commercialized out of Jennifer Lewis and Group. And Electronics raised six hundred and seventy-four thousand dollars to Kickstarter. Jason, Trevor, you get that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Voxel Eight recently was a gold winner at the Mass Challenge for Kids. So with that, I'll leave it up to Michael Bell. Circuitscribe, which is one of our, uh, which was our Kickstarter that raised six hundred seventy-four thousand dollars, and I'll try and give you some background on how we were successful, the background of the, the uh, ink, the, the ink and the pen, as well as uh, what it takes to really run and manufacture something of the scale that we, we ended up doing. So, decades-old prototyping of electronics is not fun. You start with a schematic, and then you get it into breadboard form, and that's it. Uh, now getting from the schematic to breadboard form is always where you lose people because they don't understand how to wire it up correctly, they don't understand that these are connected to each other, there's a lot of barriers to entry. You can even put in the LED backwards. So, um, and breadboard get uh, more complicated and more complex as uh, you get larger circuits, as you can see here, just a complete mess. So how do we make electronics more accessible? Well, so. Uh, the answer to that is by drawing. Uh, a lot of kids today uh, love drawing. It's something they're very familiar with. They can fill in between the lines. Uh, coloring books are, are everywhere. So trying to bring electronics into a coloring book form is uh, what we set out to do. So as uh, Polkin said, I'm from the Jennifer Lewis Research Group in C's. Um, uh, Jennifer's on the right there. We're in the Northwest building if you ever want to stop by. Um, and we have two other co-founders. So Annalise Russo, who's sitting in the back, invented the pen for her PhD work. Um, and we also have Brett Locker, who received his PhD in our research group. Um, and so we're all, we're all from the group. So uh, with that, let me, let me show you our Kickstarter. Um, so our Kickstarter uh, finished very successfully. We had over 12,000 people. Uh, it was pretty easy to sell people on a pen. Uh, but one of the keys to our Kickstarter was our video. So well, let me play that. Circuits are the building blocks of our modern world. They light our houses, and they're in our cars, computers, and cell phones. The building's simple circuit still looks like this, or like this. We thought that we could do better. We wanted to make building circuits as simple as doodling on a piece of paper. No breadboards and no wiring required. So we invented circuits for us. The world's first ball board made of the electric Pretty little screw up there. But you get the idea. In about 30 seconds, we can explain the concept of our Kickstarter. Uh, we can show you the product working and get people very excited. So our formula for our success was distilling a product down to a pen form. And second was that viral video. We got over a million hits on YouTube. Our Kickstarter page saw two, three million plus hits. And every few months, we end up on the front page of Reddit for the exact same video. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. So. We exceeded our goal greatly. Our, our goal was $85,000, and we got $674,000. So we went from a, a small scale of pens and modules to make to a very large amount, over, over the millions for certain modules. Um, so since we ended Kickstarter last January, we've been working on scaling up. Um, so Annalise and I were in China. We we're developing the modules, the manufacturing process for them, um, everything down to the, the spring constant inside of our modules, the uh, paper that our pen is being drawn on, it, it varies widely. So there was a lot of work to do. We're actually two to five months delayed on delivering all of our Kickstarter orders, but uh, I think the product we have is, is excellent. So when we first started prototyping, uh, the, I'm gonna talk about the modules here, which is mainly what I focused on uh, for the company, was how do you put these LEDs and switches and batteries out on paper, how does the connection get made, how does it um, you know, have 99% reliability, and how do you make it really cheaply? So when we first started doing this, we just laser cut uh, pieces of, uh, of wood out, put in LEDs and magnets, and held them down. And as we, as we kind of grew, we went through an industrial design phase, and we finally came up with a production version that looks more colorful, as you can see in the bottom right. So one of the challenges with connecting to paper is that you don't want to pierce it, 
You don't want to stick to it because then you can't reuse the modules. Um, and you want to have uh, enough force there that they can stay on on a vertical surface. So uh, we developed these magnetic modules that are both uh, electrical and magnetic. These feet are also known as buckyballs. They're five millimeter spheres. Um, and they're nickel coated, so they make electrical contact. And then the springs behind them uh, send that uh, electrical current through to the printed circuit boards and they make our modules function. So this is a nice cross section. So with that, we developed um, multiple types of modules and we developed a color coding scheme that was for input, output, power, and connection, as you can see on here. So you could actually start prototyping some of those circuits you saw on breadboards. And then finally, we put them into kits. Um, so this is one of the, let's see, this is the developer kit. We have 48 modules, we have a workbook. Um, one of the questions comes up is how do you cross over traces uh, if you need to you know, get a power line over something? So we just use office supplies. We use stickers, just jumper stickers, and you draw right over them. Put them over a line and draw over them. So, so let's get back to this schematic that we looked at earlier. Um, so now you go from this schematic to literally drawing a piece schematic. And then you add our modules to it, and the circuit comes to life. So this really eliminates the, the prototyping step, the, uh, the, the part where you're just not quite sure what's wrong. And then to add to that, um, we have a 27-page workbook that allows you to fill in the blank. So you don't need to know electronics. You just need to start with filling in the blank, putting the wires down, and maybe you can understand how electricity works for the first time. <laughs> so, with that, we have a new video that uh, explains what is circuit scribe in its final form. shipped to all of our backers, and there's a lot of them. So on top of the product, um, we thought there was a big opportunity to do online simulation of electronics and pair that with a physical product. So we partnered with one of the largest CAD companies in the world, which is Autodesk. And Autodesk designed uh, a simulator from scratch that allows you to place our modules in a browser, wire them up with a virtual pen, and then print this out and fill it in. So you can see the example here. Right? We drew a bear, but then we were able to place the 9 volt battery, the RGB, wire them up virtually, click simulate, and you'll see the light turn on. You can put potentiometers there and adjust the brightness. Um, it's all virtual. And about two weeks ago, we launched the next thing with Autodesk, which was um, an education, uh, or like a, a classroom lesson set. So now you can start teaching middle school, uh, high school, even elementary students how to use circuits by starting in a browser, walking them through, placing modules, simulating them, and then doing it in front of them, um, which is really cool. So we go from, from seeing the physical modules to the virtual modules now as well. So the last video I'm gonna show is how, how it works. We already drew this in the browser. You can print it out on any printer. Um, you place it on our, our steel sheet, which is on the back there. Put down the, uh, the batteries. Uh, this is a blinker module, so it allows you to adjust the, the blinking of it, and it's going to be used in the future for logic gates, so you can start doing shift registers and shift um, through modules. You can adjust the frequency on there, so it adjusts, adjusts the blinking rate. And you can see that the two uh, red and blue LEDs move. So, as we finish our Kickstarter, we've gotten a lot of press, uh, both on Reddit, but also we were on Fox 5 News. Uh, a few days ago, like we didn't have any notice of this. People were just like buying a lot of kits and were like, where's this coming from? So if you wake up in the morning, you might see us on the news. So.
So I guess I didn't give a background on our, what our research group does in CIS. Uh, we're a 3D printing materials research group. So we use this ink in 3D printing electronics, and that's really what my PhD work is in. But in this case, Annalisa was able to stick it in a pen and it worked, and we had a very uh, unique product off the bat. So yeah, sticking in printers, uh, we do 3D printing, but we also have inkjet printers. It requires a different type of printer because the particle size of the ink is so large it'll get stuck going through the head. So there's a different type of formulation for that. Um, but yes, there's applications from biomedical to unique applications of antennas and three dimensions, et cetera. And that's actually the Box Lake company that um, Polkett mentioned does 3D printing electronics. Yes? How does the resistivity of the ink compare to that of a wire? Sure. Uh, the silver is about 5% of bulk conductivity. The, the silver in our ink or the ink itself about 5% of the bulk conductivity of silver, and silver and copper are on the same order of magnitude. Um, so in some sense, it, it's 5% less. Uh, but in most cases, you over -spec our, your copper diameter in most wire is over spec for the application. So you don't really see that big of a difference. Now when you draw our ink on paper, you can get about 800 milliamps, which is usually more than enough to do any, any type of prototype. Thank you.